Well, there is a story on Sean McDermott, a three-parter by uh, Ty Dunn, Tyler Dunn, who we've been bringing on this show for years. He's covered the Packers. Uh, he covered the uh, Buffalo Bills for years for the Buffalo News and the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, the top papers in that area. And then he decided to go out on his own. And we've been bringing him on this show, or I've been bringing him on my podcast at The Volume for a long time. He's a very good reporter, and he's got a three-part series on Sean McDermott. And it points to um, a lack of accountability by the head coach. And we've said over the last three or four weeks, you can tell Sean McDermott's in trouble by the way his demeanor has changed at the podium. He's much more apologetic, a little less rigid at the podium. Um, Ty Dunn's joining us. Go long TD.com, Twitter at Ty Dunn. So um, a lot of times you have to pry information out of sources. There are other times sources contact you and want to give you information. If I could, which one was it? Were people more than willing to talk here? Look, Colin, as you know, there's the NFL that will be spun at a podium in press conferences with poll tested narratives. And look, sometimes a lot of coaches and a lot of players will keep it real at that podium. A lot of times, it's chum, it's slop, and it, it, it's not the truth. I do think that with the Buffalo Bills, with Sean McDermott, with the 25 players, coaches, uh, personnel men that I talked to that have been in that building, there is a, an atmosphere day-to-day that, as one assistant coach put to me, you're not just playing that team on a Sunday. You've got to overcome your own head coach. And there's a lot that goes into it. I know we, we've got one segment to, to, to chat about it, but it could be something as small as the Buffalo Bills wide receivers loving their coach, Chad Hall, so much that they're going to buy him a truck in 2020. I mean, that's unheard of. It's unbelievable. And then Sean McDermott turns it into the most negative thing possible. Multiple coaches told me it was a dark day at one Bills drive. So just, just one small example. I guess he didn't really like the relationships that these position coaches might have had with their players. They thought there might have been a little a little jealousy there. Just a needless war fought within, right? And then you can take a big picture to the point where you've got Josh Allen, you've got this freak show quarterback, only two or three people on the planet can do what Josh Allen does, yet there's a reason, late in games, he produces what should be a game-winning drive, and Sean McDermott and the defense get, get tight. You know, that's the other word. You hear robot, and you hear tight, and I do think we can get into 13 seconds if you want. I do think that that was a moment for this team. If we look back at the Sean McDermott era, that might have been the moment that broke the team because it's one thing to just write it off as execution to the fans who are pouring their money, their sanity into your product. But that, that moment was never really dealt with within the building. Several players and coaches said. right When Sean McDermott is the one who calls for the boot through the end zone, the touchback, when the special teams coordinator calls a squib, when Sean McDermott, I was told, takes over the defensive play calling duties from Leslie Frazier, and then Leslie Frazier is basically scapegoated in so many ways. After that, um, you know, he tells the coaches the next day, you guys got to figure it out and, and leaves. So I don't know. Like, I, it's, I, I get it. He has every right to defend himself. I'm just relaying specific stories that were, were shared by not one, not two, not three, many people in the building. Why did he get an extension last season amid all the chaos? Because it was even worse before he got here. Look, you got to give Sean McDermott credit for two big things, in my opinion, Colin. I, I think that 17-year playoff, Joe, obviously, th- this was a team that was hiring retreads, right? The Malarkeys, the Chan Gailies, the Dick Durans. When the Buffalo Bills head coaching job became available, you're not getting the best of the best to coach some of these quarterbacks in, in the talent level. They had, nobody even knew who the GM was for a long time. So the fact that he did come in and end the drought and clean up the building, look, they needed a lot of this order. They needed a lot of this discipline. Um, to an extent, they needed that, that militant kind of environment because it was a clown show with Rex Ryan. I mean, to the extreme. But then it gets to a point where you draft Josh Allen. You've got an all-time quarterback. And you can't get over that hump. I get it. The most winning and winning coach in Buffalo Bills history, three straight division titles. You can make the case that Sean McDermott should be the head coach of the Buffalo Bills for a long, long time. 
I think that there's also a very strong case to be made that years from now, a lot of people will be looking back at this era of Buffalo Bills football and say, what if? Josh Allen's 27 years old. He plays a just all-out, run-through-your-face uh, style of football, as one friend and teammate explained to me. Just let Josh Allen be Josh Allen. Don't go on NFL Network trying to neuter his game, saying that he's got to change his play style. That's kind of why you saw a sedated version for stretches this season, you know, putting those thoughts in his head, I believe. So let Josh Allen be Josh Allen. And I think an offensive coach who thinks big picture and doesn't get too granular, right? They needed that granular early on. They needed that meticulous, maniacal attention to detail early on post Rex. It's gotten to the point where you need a coach who is just going to believe in his players and trust that, trust their guts, trust their intuition. And you do that by going forward on fourth down. You do it by going for the win with 20 seconds left and not taking a kneel. You do it for going for the touchdown at fourth and six in overtime of that same game against Philly. Time and time and time again, the team is coached and managed in a way that is counterproductive given the unbelievable quarterback, unbelievable talent that you have in Josh Allen. And I'll be honest, this was a surprise to me. Their relationship, it's not necessarily toxic. I don't think it's, you know, even to the degree of a Rodgers McCarthy, I, I was told it was just kind of apt. It's just not really that dynamic, not really that special. Now he did have that kind of relationship with Brian Dable. Brian Dable is going to become the head coach of the New York Giants. That's, that's understandable. But I think that's at the heart of everything here in Buffalo is they're just really not aligned. Like you see with a Patrick Mahomes and with an Andy Reid, even with a Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, where he's a six round pick. He's quote unquote institutionalized as one uh, former Bill told me to, to Bill Belichick's way. So he's, of course, he's going to sign off and everything Bill wants to do. It's just a little off. Yeah. I mean, McVay, Stafford, McVay, Stafford, McCarthy, Dak. These are very close relationships. Shanahan, Brock Purdy. uh, There's no question. There's a symmetry between offensive coaches and quarterbacks that often defensive coaches, Mike Zimmer, Kirk Cousins didn't get along. Pete Carroll, Russ, Mac Jones, Belichick, uh, Brian Flores and Tua was a disaster. Mike McDaniel and Tua are very close. So there's clearly these defensive coaches and rigidity struggle with quarterbacks. I want to ask you this. If they lose to Kansas City and it goes completely sideways down the stretch, I have read the GM said we're not firing McDermott, but things change week to week in this league. If they just lose to Kansas City, stumble down the stretch, finger pointing, is there a chance? Because it's a small market. They tend to give chances a little longer rope, you know, to coaches. They just do. That's just Green Bay. You've covered them both in Buffalo. Is there a chance McDermott, if it went sideways, would get fired? So it's Terry Pagula's decision. He's the owner and Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean are, you know, kind of joined at the hip here contractually. And I remember Sean McDermott, when he came in, he was that one voice. He was in charge and he brought in Brandon Bean to be his GM. I'll say this, Colin, just as an aside to a man, everyone, a player, a coach who had very, very critical things to say about the head coach, Sean McDermott. It's the opposite with Brandon Bean. I, I think that he puts out a lot of fires behind the scenes that nobody sees. He was the driving force behind drafting Josh Allen. He's built a roster that's good enough to win a Super Bowl. So I I just found that to be interesting. I I think that he would be uh, 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 somebody that you want around to turn this thing around. But at the heart of the NFL, as you know, and you just put it perfect, it's hard to get that quarterback and head coach combination. And they might have had that possibility with Dave all before. And I think it's okay for the Buffalo Bills. And this is only Terry Pagula can make this decision, right? Because Division titles, uh, 10 win seasons, you're going to get that with Sean McDermott, Josh Allen, and the current setup. But if the goal is Super Bowls, you can't proceed like this head coach does on the sideline late in games. You can't look up at that clock, see 20 seconds, and think, man, what could go wrong here? What could go wrong? Oh, Josh threw an interception early in the game. Let's just take a kneel. You got to be bold. You got to think, wow, look at that Kyle Shanahan coaching tree. It's branched out there to Miami now. It's gone to Houston. Maybe Bobby Slowick would be an answer. Right? Look look around the NFL. A Ben Johnson. A Press Taylor. Brian Callahan. There's tons of possibilities. This would instantly be the number one coaching job in the NFL. The opportunity to coach Josh Allen, you kidding me? 
coaches would sell their souls for that chance. Yep. So I think it's a little different than when they're hiring Dick Gerard and those guys. Does the owner get to that point? Does he see Josh Allen at 27, see his game, see the Super Bowl window, and want to get that proactive? That's his decision. GoLongTD.com, Tyler Dunn. I said this on my podcast. I think Harbaugh, I think the, the, the place for Jim Harbaugh would be Buffalo because what Jim does is develop quarterbacks and consistent O-lines and run games, and Buffalo's got a lot going for it. Those are the three holes. Elevating the run game, the offensive line, and making the quarterback more comfortable. That's exactly what Jim Harbaugh does. It feels like the hole in an otherwise well-run organization in Buffalo. Check his stuff out. Ty Dunn, golongtd.com. We got to go. It's great seeing you. Congrats on all your stories. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.